working on friction. Got a request that we look at this guy. So I'll freeze this so that you can get it in your notes. Is, is this the one? All right. So go ahead and draw this and let's see what we can do here. Okay, so I get a free body diagram. It's going to look something like this. And this is point three meters and point six meters. And we're asked to find uh, the minimum Wow the m m that says minimum. Can you see it? <laughs> sort of one of those engineering things you have to squint so that you can see it, right? So it's, it says minimum. Mm-hmm. Minimum coefficient of static friction so the spool doesn't move. Okay. Oh, and it says it's uh, 50 kilograms, 50 kgs. Right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to throw that on here. Is some mg down, so 50 is 9.81. Okay. All right. Hootie, hootie, hootie. Am I missing any forces? We're probably in pretty decent shape here. So let's go ahead. For it not to move, it needs to stay in static equilibrium. But when it says find the minimum coefficient of friction so that it doesn't move, that means that it's about to move, right? So in our types of problems, we have not close to slipping, just about to slip, and slipping, right? There's three types of friction problems. This is the middle one, right, where we're saying it's just about to slip. And what does that tell us? Yeah, we're going to have the maximum friction force, which we know then the force of friction uh, is going to be mu static times its normal, right? So we probably need some other equations. That doesn't solve it for us. Let's go ahead and sum the forces in the x direction, set those equal to zero, I'm going to take to the right as positive. And it looks like I'll have t cosine 60 uh, minus n equals zero. And ooh, if I sum the forces in the y direction, It looks like I'll have T sine 60 uh, minus 50 times 9.81 plus the force of friction, which we know is mu static normal. So mu static is what we're trying to solve for. And then this is the uh, normal at A. And I should put this as normal at A. Okay. 
So it looks like we have three unknowns so far, right? And two equations. So we're going to have to do another one. Any suggestions for the next one? The moments about A? Mm, I don't like the moments about A. Why? Because finding the distance to the tensile, the, the T force, would be really difficult. Moment about the center. Yeah, so let's see the moment about the center. Okay, so if we take the moment about the center, I'm just going to say that C. Okay, and the reason I do that is it eliminates the weight, it eliminates the normal force, and I'm just left with T in the force of friction. Right? So T is going to be a negative T times 0.3 force of friction is positive, so plus mu static normal at A times uh, 0.6 equals 0. And now I have three equations and three unknowns that I can solve for, right? I've got, um, well, I guess we can use T as T in our calculator. Let's call it NAX and mu static is Y. Yeah. Uh, it's really hard to see here, but it's the radius of the inner. It's like a spool, and see the rope goes to like an inner diameter. Yeah. This get us some answers. Anybody get us some answers? Okay. All right, what numbers did you get, Travis? Let's see, I had 359. Okay. Yep. For normal force, I have 180. Mm -hmm. And for coefficient of static friction, I have 1. Yeah. Wow. Okay, everybody agree with that? Okay. So it's going to have to be a really sticky wall for this not to slide, right? Okay. Victoria, does that help? Oh, gosh, they did it about A. Did they get the same answers as we did? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So if you sum the moments about A, Oh, how could you do that? Yeah, you could do that. It would just be... Ah, it actually... I No, yeah. Hmm. 
because you'd need to know where this tangent point is. Well, you'd have to make a. Tr you could. Uh, well, it wouldn't be perpendicular though. Gosh, doing it around A would make it really hard. I think to find the the distance for the perpendicular distance for T, right? Um, Uh, no, it's a it's a fundamental problem. <clears throat> so it should be back there. Yeah, let's take a look. So this is eight six, yeah. and they got a different force too. Uh oh. Let's see what they did and what we did. I liked what we did. Let's see if I like what they did. 490.5 times 0.6. So they're summing the moments about A. Okay, so let's try and recreate. Let's see if I can get this to show both of them. Okay, so they're doing uh, 490.5 times 0.6. Okay, so that's the distance. That's the weight times the distance. Minus T cosine 60. That's the horizontal piece. Right? That's going to be, let's do this. Here's T cosine 60 uh, times 0.3 cosine 60. Point 0.3 is this, so that would give you this distance plus point 0.6. Yeah, they did it wrong. <coughs> yep. Minus T sine 60. Yeah. Can you guys see that? Can you see how they did it wrong? Okay. So here's what they're doing. They went down the road that <clears throat> I saw and said, I don't want to go down that road. So here's what they did. They did this. Here's their drawing. They have this T force that comes off tangent, right? And this is 60 degrees. Agreed? And they're summing the moments about A right here. And so what they do is they, the only, that eliminates both my normal and my force of friction, and it just leaves the weight, which they're saying is 490.5 times 0.6. I agree with that. And then they say, well, let's break this T force into a horizontal piece and a vertical piece. Right? Okay. Where this piece here, the horizontal, would be T cosine 60. And the vertical piece would be T sine 60. Agreed? Sure. Okay. So then <clears throat> they need to figure out about A, what's the diff, what's the, uh, and this is where they go wrong, what's the perpendicular distance for the vertical piece to A? Well, we know that this distance here, is 0.6 mm -hmm. and then we need this little distance between the line of action and the center right so that'd be 0.3 cosine 60 agreed the problem is that they switch their x and y the distances for their x and y right so this 0.3 cosine 60 plus 0.6 should be times t sine 60 and this should be T sine 60 times 0.3 cosine 60. Okay. So they've switched the legs. All right. Can we flip it to see if you get the same answer? Sure. Try it. Wait, which are you going to flip? Are you going to flip it in ours or flip it in theirs? Uh, just make the changes that you said and see if we get the same answer. Yes. Okay. So you can do these equations. Just switch the, uh, the legs.
why in their x equation do they have sine 16? Like, they have t sine 16. Uh, let's make sure that I... Maybe I gave myself the wrong 60 degrees. There's always that. Oh, wasn't that 60 degrees off the uh, circle? Ah, dang it! Uh, all right, so maybe they didn't do it wrong. I just looked at the problem wrong. So they are saying 60 degrees here, which is really 30. Like, that's a totally weird way to define 30 oh degrees. Oh. Goobers? Okay. So then we would have to go back and redo ours and say this is 30. Right? And if you do that... I'm sorry. So maybe they did it right. <clears throat> My drawing just, so the, the problem there is that they have 60 degrees off of the vertical that really defines a 30, and I defined this originally as 60. So, yeah. So if we fix that in our equations, I hope we get T is like 490, yeah. yep. and mu static is 0 0.577, and, X is like 425. and this is like 425. Pew! Yes, the coefficients are, should be less than one. All right. Better? Okay. My apologies for not copying the problem perfectly. So we did it right the first time. We just had the wrong angle. So when we do it again with the correct angle, we do match the, the back of the leg. Okay? And they were. They had switched the legs. If... <laughs> the angle was how I said it should be, right? Okay. All right. Any other questions from homework you tried or did? Completed? Anyone want to brag about the number of friction problems they solved in between now and Monday? You can do a humble brag. Oh, look at that. Did you do four too, Sean? I did the eight four in the regular problems. Eight four in the regular problems. Question about that or just bragging? You want to double check your answers. Okay. Let's give it a whirl. So I'm going to pause it. Oh, I saw that one. It's pretty slick. Like that. It's pretty slick. Huh? Huh? Oh, wow. Little engineering pun there. Huh? It's pretty slick. Working on friction. Huh? Okay. The winch on the truck is used to hoist the garbage bin onto the bed of the truck. If the loaded bin has a weight of 8,500 pounds and center of gravity at G, determine the force in the cable needed to begin the lift. The coefficients of static friction at A and B are mu A equals 0.3 and mu B equals 0.2 respectively. Neglect the height of the support at A. Okay. So essentially what we have, well, you draw the free body diagram you see. I'm going to draw the one I see, and hopefully I get the angles right this time. I had something about like this. Okay. We know this angle here is 30 degrees, 
as well as this angle here is 30 degrees. Um, why is NB at an angle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you look really closely, you can see it's already started up the ramp there. And so the normal is always perpendicular to the surface. So that means at B, it's just starting up the ramp. So it's going to be perpendicular to the surface at 30 degrees. Excuse me? I think that's why it's going to neglect the height of J. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's saying that it's just pretty much horizontal. Okay. So <clears throat> the problem says... I have a question. Yeah. Why did you put your NA all the way at the very left? Oh... Because, well, because there's a little foot there, see? Right. Oh, okay. And they're giving me the dimensions, so, yeah. Okay. I was trying to make it bigger for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, we should probably add the tension in the cable. That that probably be a good thing right because that's what we're asked to find is it the force required to start moving this guy up the ramp right okay so let's just dive in we can say that some of the forces in the X uh, we're gonna say it's going at a constant rate so uh, we'll have it is just about to move though, so we, what do we know? What type of problem is it? Is it two? So type two, what do we know? The force of friction equals the maximum force of friction available. So that means it's mu static times normal. So the force of friction at A, we know this guy is actually mu a, uh, static times normal at A, and force of friction at B we know is equal to mu static times normal at B, right? So, in the x direction then, it looks like I'll have T cosine 30 uh, minus mu static for at A was 0.3, so we'll say 0.3 in A minus 0.2 in B. That's mu static at B, but we have to, it's only going to be the horizontal part of that, so it's cosine 30 minus in B sine 30 equals 0. Right, so the force of friction at A, the force of friction at B, T, and NB all have components in the X direction. So we need to account for all of them. Okay. Looks like I have quite a few unknowns there, so I, I can't solve yet, right? I have three. So let's sum the forces in the Y, set that equal to zero. Up being positive. So it looks like I'll have uh, NA plus NB times cosine 30 plus T sine 30, because it's going up, minus uh, 0.2 NB sine 30, right? Because it's NA, NB, T, and force of friction at B that have components in Y equals zero. Yeah, it weighs something. Yep. Don't forget that. Uh, maybe I'll put it out here. Minus 8,500 pounds. Start with the weight. And this is equal to zero. And then, uh, where would you like to sum the moments about? B, absolutely at B, right? 
So we'll sum the moments about B and set that equal to zero. Why is B the obvious choice? Because it's got a bunch of forces that act through it with angles. So it eliminates three forces that all are at an angle. Okay. So if we sum the moments at B, then we'll have um, 8,500 times 12 minus NA times 22. equals zero, right? Because the force of friction at A actually passes through B as well. And so we can just solve for the normal at A right off the bat. It's going to be like 4,300 pounds, 4,400 pounds, 4,636. Okay. And then knowing that, we substitute back in, and what do we get, Sean? Oh. <coughs> Thank you. Um, we don't need to, right? Because uh, we only have three unknowns, uh, T, N, A, and N, B. And so with three equations, we should be able to solve it. Yep. Anybody get values for N, B, and T? Yeah. What'd you get? For, um, for B, I have 2650. So 2651. Okay. And for T, it is 3,666. I didn't do that. Did someone confirm <coughs> that's what they got? Rebecca confirms. All right. Any other questions from the homework? Okay. We'll take a quiz. Go ahead. All right, so here's the quiz. Determine the friction developed between the 50 kilogram crate. So that tells us, oh, we got 50 times 9.81 acting down. Looks like we're pushing it that way. So which way does the friction force go? To the right. To the right. Why? Because it's opposing. Because it's opposing motion, right? Okay. Uh, and the ground, if P equals 200 newtons, and it B if P is 400 newtons. The coefficient of static and kinetic friction between the crate and the ground are mu static is 0.3 and mu kinetic is 0.2. So what type of problem is this? Do we know yet? Not yet. No. We don't know, right? So we're going to go ahead and solve this problem just saying some of the forces, the x so equals 0. Oh, yeah, well, I guess. I suppose we might have some normal. Sure. That looks more normal. Okay. It doesn't matter including the distance x or not. It doesn't, right? Why doesn't it matter? Because there's no distance. It's not going to tip. We can just say that. Okay? Uh, some of the forces in the x looks like I'll have negative. I always like right being positive. Uh, negative 4 fifths times 200 uh, minus, no, excuse me, plus the force of friction equals zero, right? So in this case, we find that the force of friction then, four-fifths of 200 
I believe that's going to be 160. Yeah, that's Thank you. And then we'll sum the forces in the y. We'll have the normal force minus 50 times 9.81. Uh, minus three-fifths times 200 equals zero. And so if you solve for the normal, what do you find there? Six what? Six, 10.5 newtons. Then we know that our force of friction max, right, would be 610.5 times 0.3, which is what? 183.15. So the question is, is the force of friction less than the force of friction max? Is it? Yes. Yes, it is. So what does that tell us? Okay, so it tells us that the force of friction is 160 newtons. What else does it tell us? It's not, it's not sliding, right? So if we'd done this and we found out that the force of friction was 200 and F max was 183, what would that tell us? We'd have to recalculate the force of friction using the kinetic constant. We'd know that it's sliding, right, is really what that comes down to. So for part A, the answer is the force of friction is 160 newtons, okay? So this would be part A. Now, yeah, so if what we're doing in, this is the type of problem, we have three types of problems, right? One where we don't know if it's sliding or not, where it, the second where it's just about to slide, and the third where we know it's sliding, okay? I know, but so this is type one. We don't know if it's sliding or not, right? And so what we do is we assume, okay, well, let's just say, let's say the for, put the force of friction in there, not saying it's mu static times normal. We're just going to say it's an unknown force of friction. Yeah. We solve for that, and we find that it's 160 newtons. Yeah. Okay? Then we solve in the y direction, and we find that our normal is 610. Yeah. So based on this normal and this mu static, we can find that the maximum friction force that could be provided in this situation is 183 Newtons. So then we compare that 183 to the force of friction we calculated. Ah, uh, so now that we see that there's 160 newtons, which is less than the 183, we know that it is indeed is capable of providing that much friction force and not moving. So cool, we're at 160 now. Okay. So part B looks very much the same. Right. So some of the forces in the x will have negative 4 fifths times 400 instead of 200 this time, plus the force of friction equals zero. So I'm guessing that doubles it, and we then say the force of friction is 320 newtons. Okay. Now, we probably don't even need to go any further because we know it's going to, well, we should. You have to find the normal We'll, we'll go ahead and find the normal. So we'll sum the forces in the y, say that's zero. Uh, we'll have minus uh, 50 times 9.81, minus 3 fifths times 400, plus the normal equals zero. So the normal then is what? 730.5. 730.5. So then the F force of friction max is going to be 730.5 times 0.3, which is what? 219.2 newtons. So is the force of friction we calculated less than F, F max? No. no, it is not. So that tells us what? Sliding. We're sliding, okay? So then we know if we're sliding that the force of friction just becomes our uh, 730.5, our normal force, times mu kinetic, which is 0.2. And that's going to give us 140, 
6.1. And so this would be the force of friction in the second one. Okay? Now, take your pen and say Andy at the bottom. Andy? Andy at the bottom. I get x out of 10 points, where x is the value you want. And if you put in x, I'll try and put it in the grade book for you. So I want you to tell me, how much of this do you understand, right? No. Do you not like no four-letter words over 10, OK? <laughs> OK, let's do some more problems. Um, Got about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Let's do this one because it's a log, and I love logging. It's super fun. And it's a block and tackle. It's a pulley. Okay. Okay, so we've got this log. It says it weighs 40 pounds a foot. It says a guy can pull on the rope with a maximum force of 80 pounds. Determine the greatest length of log he can drag. And the static is 0.3. Okay. I find it much better to get a long cable, tie it around the log, and tie it to the bumper of your truck. And you put some slack in it, so that you can get going about 30 miles an hour, and then it pulls the log out of the woods. Oh, no, no, no. You put it to the bumper. Yeah. That's how Warren recommends doing things, yeah? No, not so much. It works. It's fun. You're, the back of your truck, if you're not in a perfect line, kind of goes, woo, jumps sideways. But yeah. OK, so. <clears throat> The reason I like this problem is because we've got that pulley in the middle, and I think sometimes it's hard to determine, well, how much force is pulling on the log? How do you guys go about approaching that? How much force do you think is pulling on the log? What do you think? So pulleys usually help, right? They like cut it in half, but you move half as far. Easiest way to do this is to say, in this class, ropes always have continuous tension in them. That's one solid rope. So if I cut it halfway between A and B, how many times would I cut through the rope? Four times, right? And so in fact, my free body diagram looks like this. I cut it four times, so there's four 80-pound loads, or four 80-pound forces pulling on that pulley, right? So if we go back and look at this, this rope is continuous and wraps around all of these. So if I cut right here, I would expose four tension forces, and we know those tension force has a value of 80 pounds, so it would be four times 80, which is, I think, 320, okay? Then we're going to have some normal force, right, from the log. And we're going to have some force of friction that opposes that. Now, what type of problem is this? Is this a type 1, type 2, or type 3? Mm -hmm. Let's, 
we do know log has a coefficient of static fr of state friction. <laughs> you know that state friction, sort of like the federal friction, only it's different. Static friction. Of mu static equals 0.3 with, with the ground and a weight of 440 pounds per foot. If a man can pull on the rope with a maximum force of 80 pounds, determine the greatest length L of log he can drag. So what determines that? It, the max friction. Yeah, he wants to be able to drag it, right? We know he can only pull it at 80. So in order to drag it, what do you have to overcome? F, the force of friction max. Okay. So in this case, this is a type 2 problem. And we know that the force of friction is going to be the mu static times the normal. Okay, Because it's a type 2. So what we don't know is the normal, right? We know the force we're pulling on it with, so we can say some of the forces in the x equals 0, right, is positive. We'll have 320 pounds, excuse me, yeah, 320 pounds of force. That's 4 times 80, minus the force of friction, which we know is mu static, which is 0.3, times the normal uh, the normal force, and this we're going to say is equal to zero. So it looks like the normal force then is just 320 divided by 0 0.3. Be around a thousand, I think, right? Excuse me. 1,066 pounds. Okay. Now we know the log it weighs 40 pounds per foot. So we could say, okay, 40 pounds per foot, uh, it weighs 1,066 pounds, right? So if I take 1,066, I want to figure out the number of feet, and I divide by 40. Twenty-six point six feet is the length of log I can pull. Okay, it's not so bad, right? But would you have like the actual calculation there is not so bad? Would you have been able to do it, though, if you didn't recognize that it's a type 2 problem? No. Right? So you really need to work these until you can recognize the type of problem we're talking about. So let's look at 813. Okay? I like these break problems. I think they're cool. Okay? So in 813, it says there's a torque of 300 newton meters applied to the flywheel. Determine the force that must be developed in hydraulic cylinder CD to prevent the flywheel from rotating. Coefficient of static friction between the friction pad at B and the flywheel is mu static equals 0.4. Okay? So, does everyone kind of understand how this works? We've got this spinny wheel. That hydraulic cylinder CD pushes out, which causes the link CA to go down and apply a brake. It's like it's got a block of sandpaper on there and it's just a friction brake. It's just smashing down on it. Use these all sorts of places. Okay. Yeah, the, there's, see the little curl, the little blue arrow uh, in the middle of the wheel? Right here. See that guy? Okay. So, I mean, we use friction all the time. Friction is a really good thing. Sometimes we think it's a really bad thing, but if you drove in a car here today, you're really grateful for friction, right? I mean, can you think of the ways that you're grateful for friction in your car? Brakes? Tires on the ground? Seatbelts, I'd say, are more of a tension thing. Uh, do you have a clutch in your car? Yep, that's just, all it is is friction. It's a round disc 
with springs on it that mash it to a piece of metal and count on it not spinning because it's mashed hard enough. That, I mean, they're incredibly basic, right? Okay. No, it, uh, clutches just use spring force. The fluid pressure is just to disengage the clutch. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Started. Don't get me started. <laughs> My truck's been in the shop for three weeks to get a clutch that takes one day to put in. I never pay people to work on my car, but I decided to this time, and boy, do I regret it. I'm trying to be a grown up, but it's very hard. Your parents weren't lying when they said being a grown-up is hard. Just saying. You will, everybody's, everybody's parents. Like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. You guys got this in your notes yet? Just about. Almost. Okay, what type of problem is this? Type one, two, or three? Good pickup. But it's asking us the coefficient of static, uh, excuse me, nope. It's asking us determine the force that must be developed in the hydraulic cylinder CD to prevent the flywheel from rotating. So it's the max, right? So it's a, it's a type 2. It's saying it's just about to slip. So we know that the force of friction has to be equal to the maximum force of friction, which would be 0.4 times the normal. Okay. All right. Well, we know that we have 300 newton meters. So let's draw our free body diagram of the wheel first. Uh, and we'll unfreeze the screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's my free body diagram kind of of the problem. We're describing it. And this is, this is my cuerpo libre. Okay. So in my cuerpo libre, I've got 300 newton meters of twisty. I'm going to have a force of friction that's counteracting that, right? Because the force of friction counteracts motion. Okay. And we know that the force of friction <coughs> has to counteract this 300 Newton meter. So I could sum the moment about O. This is O in the problem. So if we sum the moments about O, set that equal to zero, counterclockwise is positive, I'll have the force of friction times the diameter of that guy is 0.3 meters. Uh, minus 300 newton meters equals zero. So I'm thinking the force of friction has to be 1,000 newtons. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's the radius is 0.3 meters. Yeah, because the wheel's trying to spin this way, right? So just think about which way you would push to counteract that motion. Does that make sense? Could you move your force of friction now? It's just under the conjunction of x and y at this moment. Say that again? Like, could you put your force of friction um, like where it would be like along the y axis going up? No, because see, the brake pad is applied right here. Gotcha. Okay. 
So does everyone agree the force of friction has got to be 1,000 newtons? Okay, so if the force of friction has to be 1,000 newtons, I can substitute that back in here, right? And I'll see that 1,000 newtons has to equal 0.4 times the normal force. So the normal then is 1,000 divided by 0.4. Uh, 2,500 yeah. or 2,500 newtons. Okay. Good to know. Why, why do I care about the force of friction and the normal? They're related, but I was asked to find the force needed in this cylinder CD, right? So now I have to draw a second free body diagram. This is sort of like one of those machine problems, right? Remember those pesky machine problems? Do we have any two force members here? Yeah, yeah we've got CD. We have a pin at A. Uh, CA is not a two force member, right? So I'm going to say we've got AX. A Y. At B, we've got a little bump, right? Because we come down 60 millimeters. And it says we've got a normal force of 2,500, and that's acting down, right, on this. So that means that it's opposite and acting up here with 2,500 newtons. What about the force of friction? We had it drawn to the left here, because that's what it requires to stop the wheel. What direction does that mean it needs to act on this guy? To the right. If you think about this, uh, that force of friction we decided was 1,000 newtons, right? If you think about this, if the wheel was spinning, as it's indicated here, and you stuck your hand on it, what direction would your hand try and move? Right? And try and shoot it out like that. Okay, so the force on my hand is that direction, but the force on the wheel, if I hold my hand still, would be in that direction, right? Good example of how forces need to be equal and opposite. Very easy to get caught up on this with spinny things in particular, okay? So can we solve this guy now that we have uh, a free body diagram here? Three unknowns, we can write three equations, right? So some of the forces in the X has to be equal to zero. So I'll have FCD cos 30 plus 1,000 plus AX equals zero. Some of the forces in the Y I'll have F, C, D, sine 30, plus 2,500, plus A, Y, equals 0. We need one more, so we'll sum the moments. Where do you want to sum the moments about? Yeah? I think I want to sum them about C. Because that eliminates FCD and AX, and then everything's kind of perpendicular and parallel. So I'm going to say C. A would have worked as well, but if I sum them about C, looks like I'll have 2,500 times this distance, which is 0.6 meters, uh, plus AX times uh, 1.6 meters, excuse me, AY, uh, minus 1,000 times 0 0.06. And that equals zero, right? The Excuse me? Because the brake pad has a little bit of thickness, which is 60 millimeters. Uh, 
Snap, you're right. Because I'm summing it about here, this would cause a positive moment. So this sign should be positive as well. Thank you. The, it's plus 1,000 times 0 0.06 here. Okay. Anybody get a value for FCD? Three thousand and fifty pounds mm -hmm. compression. Yep. Newtons. Thank you. Great. Yeah. And it's in compression, right? Because it has to push down. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So, I'm going to give you a, a doozy of a graded problem out of uh, Section 8.2 here, okay? Um, well, it, I'm not going to necessarily guarantee that because we'll go on to the forces and screws too. So, wedges and screws is what we're doing um, on Friday. So, we'll do both wedges and screws, which is 8.3 and 8.4 on Friday, okay? Um, but I will post a graded problem uh, later this afternoon, okay? So please do some more problems in 8.2. We're going to move on and do 8.3 and 8.4 on Friday. Yes.